Uh, welcome back friends. I am Dr. Mlela and today we are going to discuss about the types of organic reactions. So at the continuation of our topic which is organic chemistry. In today's session I will not be going to use Ngaiza only. So I'll be using Ngaiza also I'll be using uh, other materials. But for the sake of understanding and for the sake of you to capture many concepts just take what I am presenting here at the board that I am sure it will be enough uh, for you to capture many concepts and to answer different questions. So uh, today we are going to discuss about the types of organic reactions and the reaction mechanisms. In the previous session we will discuss about the reaction mechanisms, the principles of showing reaction mechanisms and as we saw that we have uh, different types of, uh, I mean we have a uh, about five principles of showing reaction mechanism but in this session I'm going to continue with the types of organic reaction so basically uh, we have three types of organic reactions basically basically we have three types C three types C of Organic, organic reactions which are substitution then addition and elimination So I know that different reading material, uh, they write or they categorize uh, organic reactions into different types. For example, in Gaisa you can find uh, the additional type of reaction which is rearrangement or isomerism reaction. However, um, the basic three types of organic reactions, they are these ones. So we can read uh, those other types C uh, according to the uh, different authors such as Gaisa. But no problem with that, so don't worry. But the basic uh, three types of reaction that we'll be discussing or that we'll be dealing with in this session, they are this one. So uh, let's start uh, about one type of reaction after another. Uh, and the terminology suggests in substitution reaction, we are removing a certain molecule and then we are replacing it with it another molecule. In addition, we are adding a new molecule, where in elimination we are removing a molecule or a group of atoms. So we are, we are going to start with the substitution reaction. Uh, we are going to start with the substitution reaction. It is one among the types of organic reaction. Let's start with the substitution Substitution, substitution reaction, substitution reaction. So in substitution, as I said, uh, we are removing a certain group of atoms. We are removing a certain group of atoms. Now, there are three types of substitution reaction. In substitution reaction, substitution reaction is the chemical reaction whereby an atom or group of atom is replaced by atom or group of atoms from from the compound. So let's say, uh, for example, if we have if we have benzene like this one, and then from benzene, uh, let's say we are adding we are adding let's say it is, it is chloromethane, and then if we are adding chloromethane to benzene. In the presence of aluminium chloride, which acts like a catalyst, in the presence of Lewis acid, this will result in the formation of the methyl benzene. Methyl benzene CH3 plus HCl. So, what does this imply? What does this imply? If we are drawing the structure of benzene like this, it is C, then C, then C, then C. C, then C. So uh, this is how we can draw the structure of benzene. And then we have hydrogen, 
we have hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. So if we are adding chloromethane, CH3 chloride, CH3 chloride, that means in presence of Lewis acid, aluminium chloride 3, or any Lewis acid that you know, that means this methyl group will replace hydrogen. So that means an atom which is hydrogen, an atom which is hydrogen, hydrogen is replaced by the group, the group of atoms of atoms among CH3 which is a methyl group so this is what is meant by elimination reaction hydrogen which we are present here it is replaced by methyl now so at the end of the day we are getting methyl benzene in which here we have CH3 so this is what uh, we can define as the substitution reaction we have replaced the, an atom or a group of atoms. Now, according to the type of reactant, as we know, we have three types of organic reactant. We have neutrophiles, I mean, we have nucleophile, electrophile, and the free radical. So we are categorizing, we are categorizing substitution reaction depending on the categories of the types of organic reactant. So we have three types of substitution reaction. Basing on the three types of organic reactant. Now, because you want to start the reaction mechanism, uh, the types of organic reaction and the reaction mechanism, uh, in some extent, not all mechanisms they are explained by Ngaiza. And in some extent, uh, Ngaiza has explained some of the few uh, mechanisms, but they are not somehow clear. So, we'll be using other notes to explain the mechanisms of organic reaction. So in substitution reaction, uh, we will start with the free radical. We will start with the, the free radical substitution reaction. Now let's start with the free radical substitution reaction. Free radical, free radical substitution, substitution reaction. So in the free radical substitution reaction, we are substituting a free radical. We are still substituting a free radical. So that means in the reaction condition, we must have the conditions for the free radical formation. As we know, the homolytic bond cleavage, as we say, uh, for example, if we have chlorine, then chlorine, in order to form free radicals, that means there must be homolytic bond cleavage. And if you remember, we mentioned the condition for homolytic bond cleavage in the previous uh, two sessions. I mean, in the, in the previous session, we mentioned the condition for homolytic bond cleavage. Homolytic, homolytic bond cleavage. We said the are conditions such as UV light, the are conditions such as high temperature, the are conditions such as higher electricity presence of organic peroxide, they are favoring the occurrence of homolytic bond cleavage. Now when we are doing the free radical substitution reaction or free radical, free radical addition, free radical elimination, we must have homolytic bond cleavage. We must have homolytic bond cleavage. So now, uh, let's see uh, an example of the free radical substitution reaction. And then we we'll move to the mechanism how the free radical substitution reaction takes place. Now let's uh, let's see uh, an example. An example is CH4 uh, plus chlorine. So you can say four chlorine to get C Cl4 plus four HCl. This is uh, an example of the free radical substitution reaction. Now what is represented here it is the complete reaction because this one as we know this one is methane is methane 
And here is Corinne this. Corinne this. So, methane, if it is reacted with Corinne gas, in the presence of the condition which favor homotic bond cleavage, such as UV, right? In the presence of condition which favor homotic bond cleavage, methane with chlorine gas will do a complete reaction forming tetra tetrachloromethane forming tetrachloromethane and the four molecules of hydrogen chloride now this is the complete reaction normally what people know is the reaction which can be presented is CH4 plus chlorine gas which is methane if it is reacting with chlorine in the presence of UV light in the presence of UV light to form CH3 chloride plus hydrogen chloride now normally people they know about this reaction and they know this reaction is between methane and the chlorine gas to form chloromethane and hydrogen chloride however what is shown here it is just one or a single step of the reaction this kind of reaction they can take place many times until all of the hydrogen atoms they are substituted by chlorine because if we have the enough number of chloride atoms we have the conditions for homolytic bond cleavage and we have the molecule here if one hydrogen is replaced by this procedure that means one hydrogen is substituted by this procedure or by this step that means we can substitute all hydrogen in the molecule by using this simple step so now uh, what we are saying about the free radical substitution reaction free radical substitution reaction is the type of organic reaction in which an atom or group of atom of a reacting molecule is replaced by a free radical an atom or group of an atom of reacting molecule is replaced by a free by a free radical now the free radical chain mechanism involving three steps in these uh, reactions the reaction mechanism involves three steps now we will use the same reaction to show the reaction mechanism how the reaction uh, occurs how the reaction occurs so reaction mechanism involves three steps involves three steps reaction mechanism reaction mechanism involves involves three steps so we have initiation initiation then you have propagation propagation and then we have termination we have initiation propagation and termination so initiation is the formation of the free free radical first free radical that is what i meant so the chain mechanism involves three steps which are initiation propagation and termination so if we are starting with the, the procedure of initiation initiation and let's see what what happens in initiation so in initiation and the first step in chain reaction in which two radicals are formed by homolysis of sigma bond two radicals are formed this is the first step first step uh, first step in the reaction in the reaction mechanism in the reaction mechanism in which in which two free radicals radicals are formed are formed from homolytic from homolytic homolytic bond cleavage homolytic bond cleavage of sigma of sigma bond homolytic bond cleavage of sigma bond 
So this is a very, very important concept for you to understand. So now you need to know uh, which molecule will undergo this uh, bond cleavage so as to form free radical. So as for our case of uh, methane reacting with the chlorine, in this procedure we will have chlorine, then chlorine in the presence of uh, conditions which favor homoeutic bond cleavage such as UV light we will form uh, this we take one one electron one electron so we will form we will form two two so we will form two two chlorine free radicals that will be the initiation step we are forming, we are forming two free radicals. They are forming from homolytic bond cleavage of sigma bond. Homolytic bond cleavage of sigma bond. So uh, that is the that is the initiation step of the reaction mechanism. So uh, in, in the propagation. In the propagation, in the middle step, in a chain reaction, in which a radical reaction, a radical reacts with another reactant to form a radical as one of the product. Propagation repeats until termination occurs. So one thing you need to understand here, uh, one thing you need to understand, this reaction we call it in the chain. This reaction, free radical substitution reaction, they occur in a chain or in a number of steps. Now, if this is our, our first step, our second step are uh, in the propagation. Propagation. Now, in the propagation step, we are saying that if free radical, free radical, free radical, react with another free radical free radical react with another free radical for me free radical is one of the products of the reaction. So one free radical tends to react with another free radical to form another free radical is one of the product of the reaction. So let's see how, how it happens. How it happens, for example, for our, our reaction. For our reaction. Uh, let's say we have a CH4 that is C hydrogen. Hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. And then we have two, two chlorine free radicals. So we are taking one free radical. We are taking one free radical. And if we are taking one free radical, here the conditions for free radical substitution reaction, they must be, still be there. So in the presence of UV, light in the presence of uv light what you form me that means uh if this one if this one will give electrons to uh carbon will give electrons to carbon or let's show uh, let's, let's show uh this arrow in another way so let's say uh, if this one will give electrons to carbon and then Free or what bond cleavage will occur here. So what will be formed here it is CH3 chloride plus hydrogen free radical. Or oh, in other words, you can say it will be formed in C because I know how for some people it will be difficult. So C hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Then one of the one of the of the hydrogen is already replaced by chlorine. 
This is propagation. Now, propagation, it doesn't as a specific number of steps because it will occur in many steps until, until, until all of the hydrogens they are replaced and then termination will occur. So termination will occur if there is no more hydrogen to be replaced. Or termination will occur if one of the reactants of the reaction is depleted. So in termination, or we are saying termination is the final step in the chain reaction, where are two radicals. So this will occur until all of these hydrogen, all of these hydrogen, they are replaced by chlorine. All of these hydrogen they are replaced by, by chlorine. And then at the end of the day, we will have hydrogen. Because you have said in propagation, one among the product of reaction is a free radical. So at the end of the day, we will have hydrogen, which is a free radical, is one among the product of reaction. And we will have another chlorine, because here we have used a single chlorine. So we will have another chlorine. And it's simply because uh, in every chlorine, for example, here we have said we have four chloride ions. So in every chlorine, we will have a hydrogen. For example, I mean, if we have this, that means one among the chloride free radicals will react with the hydrogen, forming hydrogen chloride. That's why we have four chloride molecules. Also, we have four hydrogen chloride molecules. In the termination step, there will be a reaction between the free radicals forming a neutral molecule again. So in the termination step, there will be a reaction between hydrogen plus chlorine forming hydrogen chloride. There will be a reaction between hydrogen and chlorine forming hydrogen chloride. We are drawing uh, this uh, movement of electron by these arrows. That means this one shares one electron and this one shares ele one electron. It's not a full card arrow because there is no an atom here which uh, contain pair of electron. All of them they contain a single electron. So in the termination, in the final step in the chain reaction, where two radicals combine to form a stable bond, it removes the radicals from the reaction mixture without generating a new radical, hence stopping the reaction. So to preserve a new step, because the free radicals they act to form a, a sigma bond here to form a sigma bond. So that means the free radical in the reaction mixture will be depleted. And if the free radical they are depleted, that means the reaction will not continue again. So a simple example, a simple example of free radical substitution is the reaction between methane and the, and bromine. So in our notes the, the example is bromine, but in, in our explanation, the example is chlorine. However, it's the same because all of them, they are, they are hydrogen. So the reaction between, now it will be leading like chlorine because chlorine is what I've, I have explained. So the reaction between methane and chlorine in presence of UV light or sunlight. Notice that one of the hydrogen atom in the methane has been replaced by chlorine atom in our explanation here. So in step one, which is initiation step, heat or UV light causes weak halogen bond to undergo homolytic bond cleavage with the generation of two chlorine free radicals, as how I have explained there in the first step of initiation. So heat or UV light causes weak halogen bond to undergo homolytic bond cleavage to generate two chlorine radicals and starting the reaction process starting the reaction process. And in step two, which is our propagation, in step two, which is propagation, we are saying this step, a bromine radical, that means in our explanation, a chlorine radical, in, in our second step, a chlorine radical, which is this one, goes to attack the methane. So a chlorine radical abstracts a hydrogen to form hydrogen, to form hydrogen bromide, and a methyl radical, then the methyl radical abstract a bromine atom from another molecule to form methyl bromide product. Another bromine produce another bromine, another bromine radical. So, uh, for example, 
This is uh, similar to what we have explained. It is similar to what we have explained. Uh, however, it is somehow different, but the same, the same meaning, the same meaning or the same destination. So, for example, uh, if we have uh, chlorine free radical, and then we are adding, we are adding hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. So this chlorine can go to uh, can go to attack hydrogen and then you want to create the will occur here. Then uh, if you want to create the car, that means we have hydrogen chloride plus plus carbon uh, hydrogen 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 free radical. So in the propagation step, that means this one will go to attack another bromine which is present. I, I mean, we go to attack another bromine which is present in the reaction until at the end of the day, uh, hydrogen will react with the bromine again. So this will attack another bromine, then it will form hydrogen bromide. Then the reaction mechanism will be progressively until at the end of the day, termination will occur. So in the termination, various reactions between the possible pairs of radicals allow for the formation of ethane, bromine, or the product methyl bromide. These reactions move radicals and do not uh, do not perpetuate the cycle. So, for example, uh, in this reaction, we have formed this uh, the methyl fuel. Now. That means in the termination step, sometimes you can find a reaction between this one and a free radical like this. Because in the termination, as we say, uh, as we say, let me give you a, a detailed explanation. Let me give you a detailed explanation. So, for example, uh, in, in, in propagation step, let's say we have this one, and then it is hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. So, from this one, from this one, we can add another bromine. I mean another chlorine, for our case. Chlorine, chlorine. So, this one, we donate an electron here. This one will undergo homolytic bond cleavage. Homolytic bond cleavage. And then here, our power case will form C, then hydrogen, 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 chlorine, plus chloride free radical. So, uh, what do I mean? This one, chloride free radical. We go to attack another hydrogen here. So in the in the in the next step, still in the propagation, we may have we may have chlorine free radical reacting with hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. But here there is chlorine. So this molecule, this molecule in this one. Which contain chlorine here. So what what do I mean by saying that it will form different free radicals in the termination step? If this reaction occur, all of these reactions they must take place in the presence of UV light. In the presence of UV light, uh, this can attack this one, and then at the end of the day, homoeutic bond cleavage will occur. So it will form as a free radical. So what will be formed here is the product will be hydrogen chloride plus C hydrogen hydrogen chlorine. Then this one will be free like. Finally, at the end of the reaction, we'll end up with different alternatives of the free radicals. For example, we'll be having a free radical like this. Let's call this is number one. Then we will be having a free radical like this one. Let's call this is number two. 
Also, we may have uh, a free radical like this one, and etc. But at the end of the reaction, we need all of these free radical categories to react and to end up in the formation of neutral molecules so that to terminate the reaction. So in order to terminate the reaction, if there is this free radical, it can react with chlorine, forming chloromethane. Or if there is this free radical, it can react with another free radical that exists, forming ethane, because this one it is CH3. So if it reacts with another molecule like this, it will form CH3, CH3, which is ethane. So don't wonder if we are saying that you can form uh, ethane in the termination step. Because as we say, we can have different combinations forming ethane, bromine itself, or methyl bromine, I mean methyl chlorine for our case. So you can form ethane, we can form chlorine itself because some, sometimes if we have a free radical like this, and if they are two, when they combine they form chlorine itself. But what uh, is important here, because one of the products will be a product of substitution reaction, that's why we call the reaction as the, as the free radical substitution reaction. So the reaction takes place in three steps. That's the major point for you to understand. And this is unique. It is unique in the free radical substitution reaction. It is the only reaction which takes place in a chain. All the reactions they are taking place in steps, but this one is the reaction we call it at the chain mechanism, and it takes place in a three uh, three procedures which are initiation, propagation, and determination. This is the unique characteristics of the free radical substitution reaction. No any other organic reaction which takes place in this. Uh, in these steps of initiation, propagation, and termination, except the free radical substitution reaction. Also, you will be familiar with the free radical substitution reaction when we go to discuss about the reaction of alkane. Because uh, alkane, with their stability, they undergo only a single type of reaction, which is free radical substitution. Other types of reaction, you must apply a lot of it, such as cracking and things like that. But uh, one of the commonest reactions in alkane. It is the free radical substitution reaction. Now from there, uh, let's move to nucleophilic substitution reaction. Nucleophilic, nucleophilic substitution, substitution reaction. So in the nucleophilic substitution reaction, a nucleophile, a nucleophile tend to substitute an atom or group of atom in the reacting molecule. So what we are saying here is that if nucleophilic substitution reaction, the type of substitution reaction in which an atom or group of atom is replaced by a nucleophile. So type of substitution reaction is the type of substitution substitution reaction in which an atom or group of atoms is substituted is substituted by a nucleophile is substituted by a nucleophile so, in the nucleophilic substitution reaction, this reaction can have two different uh, reaction mechanisms. We are adding a nucleophile, we are adding a nucleophile to the reacting molecule, but it can have two different or two distinct mechanisms how it occurs. It can have two distinct mechanisms how the reaction occurs. So, we are saying that this reaction involves two processes, bond breaking and bond formation of a new bond to the nucleophile. 
There are two mechanisms of nucleophilic substitution reaction, both of them competing with each other. The two main mechanisms are the SN1 reaction and the SN2 reaction. So we have the SN1 mechanisms. Mechanisms. In the mechanisms we have the SN1 and SN2. Now let's see what is SN1 and what is SN2. Uh, in SN1, in SN1, this is what you call it the substitution, free radical sub uh, I mean, I mean nucleophilic substitution reaction, unimolecular. If you have studied, uh, I mean, if you have studied uh, chemical kinetics, you know about the reaction mechanisms, and. I know the reaction mechanism you studied in, in chemical analytics, they are not similar to the organic reaction. But you know about unimolecular and bimolecular. So, S stands for chemical substitution. N stands for nucleophilic. And the number represents kinetic order of the reaction. Kinetic order of the reaction. So, chemical substitution, nucleophilic, kinetic order. Chemical substitution, nucleophilic and the number is kinetic order of the reaction. Therefore, SN1 refer to nucleophilic substitution reaction unimolecular. Unimolecular. Nucleophilic. Nucleophilic substitution reaction uni Molecular nucleophilic substitution reaction unimolecular. So, if the reaction is taking place in SN1 mechanism, and if the reaction another reaction takes place in SN2 mechanism, there will be difference between how these two reactions they are taking place. SN1 reaction how it takes place and SN2 reaction how it takes place. There is difference. Now it is very important for you to know this, to understand this basic concept because if we reach forward then we will say this reaction takes place in SN1 mechanism. But if we don't understand the meaning of SN1 mechanism that means it will be very difficult for you to understand what do we mean when we are saying SN1 mechanism or what do we mean when we are saying SN2 mechanism. Now let's go together. Now, we are saying that this implies that the right determining step of the mechanism depends on the decomposition of a single molecular species. Right determining step depends on the decomposition Of a single molecular species. Red determining step depending on the decomposition of a single molecular species. That's why it is called the substitution reaction unimolecular. Nucleophilic substitution reaction unimolecular. Nucleophilic substitution reaction unimolecular. unimolecular. So unimolecular because the red determining step or the red determining step depends on the decomposition of a single molecule. So we'll, we'll have an example. SN1 mechanism occur in multiple reaction. Occur in multiple step. Remember this because if you study SN2, it is different from SN1. So SN1, it is Multi step reaction. Multi step reaction. Reaction is taking place in many steps. It is not a single step. It is multi step reaction in which bond breaking takes place before formation of a new bond. Remember this characteristics. Bond breaking. Bond breaking takes 
stress before formation of a new bone. So, in order to understand the importance of what I'm saying here, it is true for many chemical reactions, bond breaking must occur before bond forming. So, what do we mean by this statement again? I know some of you will get confusion. That, what does it mean? What do we mean by this statement? It is very important for you to remember because later we will study the SN2 mechanism in which bond breaking and the bond forming takes place at the same time and it is a single step reaction. So that's why it is very important for you to know that this is multi step. Bond breaking takes place before bond making. While in SN2 it is single step reaction in which bond breaking and the bond making takes place at the same time. So the nucleophile can attack the carbocation. Nucleophile, nucleophile can attack, can attack the carbocation. Carbo can attack the carbocation from either side because from either from either side because it is trigonal plan because it is trigonal trigonal plan because it is trigonal plan a species the general form of SN1 mechanism is as follows. So when we are talking about of trigonal planner, trigonal planner is the shape of the carbocation. In the shape of the carbocation. Because uh, we will start in the next session. We have carbocation, carbonion, but the shape of the Carbocation it is trigonal plan. For example, uh, as we know the, the structure of, of ammonia, which is any then hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Also the structure of the carbocation, for example, it is CH3 and then positive chain. This is the uh, example of carbocation. So here we'll have a carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. Uh, however, this is not actually what we call it a trigonal planner because uh, a trigonal planner is the shape which uh, appears. I'm not so much well in drawing, but I want, I, I want to, to draw a diagram which will represent the, the trigonal planner shape. So this is the the yeah, somehow uh, it is the diagram which is present trigonal plan. <coughs> so here that means there will be a line connecting this way. If we are drawing dotted, that means it is there, so you can see. This uh, this is how you can see trigonal plan. For example, in this corner we may have carbon and then this corner. Hydrogen, hydrogen. So nucleophile can attack, can attack this from either side because it is it is trigonal plan. So now let's see the, 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 the basic mechanism of SN1, SN1 reaction, how uh, it tends to take place the basic mechanism of uh, SN1 reaction. So in, in, in the first step of the SN1, First step, uh, we have the step one. Step one. In step one, there is slow, slow loss of the living group. Slow loss of the living group. Loss of the living group to generate, to generate. 
a carbocation intermediate. Carbocation intermediate. Now, as we know from our chemical kinetics, the slowest step of reaction mechanism is the one which will be rate determining step. The rate determining step is the slowest step in the reaction mechanism. So, this is slow loss of living group. That means this is the rate determining step. Now, the manner reaction may talk about SN1 because it is rate depends only on the single step. So, uh, this reaction, let's say we have uh, carbon, then CH3, then CH3, then CH3, and here we have bromine. Remember, this is nucleophilic, nucleophilic substitution. We are substituting a nucleophile. So that means it cannot be lost here for a nucleophile. For a nucleophile. So this reaction it is slow and it is an equilibrium reaction. So the reaction is slow and it is reversible. To natural loss, lazima kiwe nini? Nucleophile. So in bond, it a break. It am by reaction yule pale. We will form CH3, then C, CH3, CH3, upper to bottom, carbocation, plus bromine. So, this is a nucleophile. Now, do you want to substitute? That means we remove one nucleophile, then we replace another nucleophile. That's why we call it nucleophilic substitution reaction. So uh, this is our first step and the, the slow reaction resulting in the formation of carbocation. So carbocation ni any group of mitochondri carbon in a positive charge equal carbon in a positive charge. So all of this is called a carbocation because this carbon it is the proof of electron and has a positive charge. In the second step, the second step it is rapid. Now let's see uh, the second step of reaction, which is rapid. And the, because it is rapid, so the, the reaction, the reaction speed. Or the determining step will not be this one, it will be the first one. So we are saying that uh, the first, uh, the second step is rapid attack of a nucleophile on electrophile carbocation to form new one. Rapid attack, step two, is the rapid attack, rapid attack of a nucleophile. Nucleophile, rapid attack of a nucleophile on the electrophile, on the electrophile, carbocation, carbocation to form a new, to form a new bond. So uh, what will happen here is uh, that you have CH3, then you have uh, C, CH3, CH3, positive charge. So we'll add a nucleophile, and then this reaction it is rapid, so it is reversible. And the reaction is passed. So we we'll form a CH3, C, CH3, CH3. Then here we we'll form, we we'll form 
new cloth. So a new bond, it is formed here. A new bond is formed here. This is how the nucleophilic substitution reaction takes place. How nucleophilic substitution reaction takes place. So, because this reaction mechanism goes through formation of the carbocation intermediate, the living group must be attached to either tertiary or secondary carbocation in order to stabilize the intermediate by positive inductive effect. So the discussion about the inductive effect and other factors which affect the reaction speed or which affect the, the mechanism of organic reaction, we will start them in the next session. But you need to understand uh, there is an inductive effect. An inductive effect uh, will take place in the carbocation and the carbon ions and is very important in the mechanism of organic reaction. So what we are saying is that the living group, uh, for example this one, the living group must be attached to either tertiary or secondary carbocation. For example this one is the tertiary carbocation. This one is the tertiary carbocation because as you can see carbon then it is attached to three carbons, it is tertiary carbon. So, because this one is tertiary carbon, then the carbocation is tertiary carbocation, as we studied in the introduction. So, it must be attached to, to tertiary or secondary carbocation in order to stabilize the intermediate by positive inductive effect. To stabilize the intermediate by positive inductive effect. The general stability of the simple alkyl carbocation is general stability. The, the tertiary carbocation general stability uh, let me write the general stability here so as you can know the, the determination of the speed of the reaction which are, the, which are taking place in SN1 mechanism so the general stability is CH3 then 3 CH this one will be more stable as compared to CH3 to CH and this one is more stable as compared to the CH3 CH2 so um, this one also is more stable as compared to methyl this is the sequence of the stability and will also determine the speed of the reaction is how we will start, uh, we'll start in, the, in the next session. Now let's move to our SN2, SN2 reaction mechanism. Let's see how it happens and what it differs from the SN1 mechanism. So in the SN2 mechanism, it is the nucleophilic substitution reaction by molecule. So again, as we said in the previous um, reaction type, SN2, so it is a nucleophilic, nucleophilic substitution reaction by molecule, by molecule. Then the features of SN2, most of them they are somewhat like opposite of the SN1. So if you understood SN1, then SN2 will go uh, just fast, we will we'll just rush through it because uh, it, is, it is very easy if we understood SN1. So what we are saying, uh, the kinet, therefore, SN2 refers to nucleophilic substitution reaction by molecular. It is formation occurs simultaneously. Formation occurs simultaneously. Formation occur simultaneously simultaneously so uh, for example here bond breaking and bond making is taking place in a single step bond breaking and bond making is taking place in a single step uh, so what we are saying what we are saying in Kwamba 
Um, the addition of a nucleophile and the remission of living group take place simultaneously. The nucleophile can attack the carbocation from the back. The general form of the SN2 mechanism is as follows. But here the nucleophile, nucleophile, nucleophile attack the carbocation from, from the back. Nucleophile attack the carbocation from the back. So, uh, in the general reaction mechanism, this is very easy, very easy, no any complication, no more explanation here. Um, reaction is very easy. So, we'll have a nucleophile, we'll have a nucleophile, then, uh, this one will be reacting with let's say it's carbon attached to the reading group then here so because the living group normally it is more electropositive sorry I mean normally the living group is more electronegative so because the living group is normally more electronegative, it will develop a slightly partial negative charge and this one will develop partial positive charge. So what will happen, nucleophile will donate electrons to carbon and because as we say the reaction takes place in a single step, so in the same step this bond will break donating electrons to the living group. The result of the reaction will be C then nucleophile plus living group. So this will be the, react the result of the reaction. And this is the general mechanism of, on how the SN2 reaction takes place. Now, the nucleophile attack at the carbocation with the partial positive charge is the result of the polar, polar S bond to the electronegative atom in the living group. As I said, that normally the living group is more electronegative. So let's say, for example, this one will be bromine, for example or any living group. Now because the living group is more negative, it tends to attract electrons towards itself and by attracting electrons towards itself, then it will left carbon with a partial positive charge while itself it has the partial negative charge. So the partial positive charge in carbon allow it to be attacked by a nucleophile and after being attacked, bond breaking and bone making takes place at the same time. So single step reaction have no intermediate and a single a single transition state. So they have the single transition state and no intermediate. So in SN2, in SN2, there is simultaneous formation of carbon nucleophile bond and breaking of the carbon living group bond. Hence the reaction proceeds via a transition state in which the central carbon is partially bonded to five groups. The central carbon is partially bonded to five groups. That means in the transition state of the reaction, in the transition state, uh, we, will have, we will have carbon, then let's say here we will have uh, a nucleophile bonded, and then we'll have another bond anywhere, let's say here, and then we'll have living group. So this is uh, just a transition state. Transition state. This bond come to be formed 
and this one go to be broken. So before a uh, complete formation, before complete formation, complete formation, and here before complete breaking, there is. There is a state which is transition state. Carbon is bound to five atoms or five different groups. So the reactivity order, reactivity order of this uh, molecule is different from the reactivity order of the SN1 mechanism. So if you remember, we said the SN1 mechanism, the Living group attached to attached to Kabukachian you have to stabilize it. But here the reactivity it is different from our uh, SN1. So we have C3. C3 is more reactive than CH3, CH2. It is more reactive than CH CH uh, I mean it is CH3 2 CH and this one is more reactive than CH3 3 C. So uh, this is the reactivity order of the SN2 reaction. When we are discussing about different types uh, or categories of reaction, in the next session you need to understand these basic uh, concepts. They will help you in your uh, answering different questions. So this marks the end of our nucleophilic substitution and now let's move to electrophilic substitution reactions. Electrophilic substitution reaction. Electrophilic electro electrophilic Substitution, substitution, or reaction. In electrophilic substitution reaction, as the terminology suggests, that the reaction in which an atom or group of atom in the reacting molecule is replaced by an electrophile. Now, we are saying that electrophilic substitution reaction is the type of organic key substitution reaction in which an atom or group of atoms of the reacting molecule is replaced by an electrophile is replaced by an electrophile there are three fundamental compounds to which electrophilic electrophilic aromatic substitution mechanism uh, what you mean this reaction electrophilic substitution reaction it is the common common substitution 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 reaction in aromatic aromatic compounds that means compounds Contain compounds containing benzene. Compounds containing benzene. This is the commonest reaction. So if you don't understand here, it will be very difficult for you to understand most of the reaction and mechanisms in the benzene. Most of them. So let me have one among the examples of. Uh, one among the examples is, for example, we have benzene, and then here, let's say we are reacting benzene with methyl, I mean chloromethane. In the presence of Lewis acid, the reaction is catalyzed by Lewis acid to form methyl benzene. Methyl benzene plus hydrogen chloride. So uh, here it is hydrogen chloride. This 
see one among the examples. Can act as example of the can act as the example of the electrophilic substitution reaction. Now, I want to show the, the mechanism of this reaction so that you can see how we are adding an electrophile. You can see how we are adding an electrophile in this in this kind of reaction. And I hope uh, it is very, very interesting, very interesting, very interesting because these things, they are the one which make, comes to, to be a sweet subject, make comes to be very good subject. Now, <coughs> let's see uh, how uh, electrophilic substitution reaction tends to press. Now, for example, let's say uh, you are given a question. Show, show the reaction mechanism for, and then you are given benzene, benzene plus C3 chloride to form in the case of aluminium chloride 3 to form ben methyl benzene methyl benzene plus hydrogen chloride. Uh, for example, uh, you are given such kind of a, of a question and uh, you are required to do uh, such kind of a question. How uh, will you tap it or how will you do it? Where you restart. So, uh, this reaction it is different from the nucleophilic because here we don't have substitution type one, substitution type two. In the first step, uh, this reaction we must form, we must form, we must form, we must form an electrophile because it is an electrophilic substitution reaction. That means an electrophile tend to substitute a group of atoms. So we we'll have in the reaction mechanism this one will break and by breaking it will give the electrons to aluminium chloride which is Lewis acid. As we know we say Lewis acid they contain empty orbital. Lewis acid they contain empty orbital. So this one will break and by breaking will give electrons to a Lewis acid. So by giving electron to Lewis acid, we will form carbonion. I mean carbocation. A carbocation is an electrophile. So in the first step, step one, uh, there is no need so much of, of, of saying the step of reaction. Chlorine, this one will be reacted with. We will react it with uh, uh, aluminium chloride three. So here, the bond will be breaking, donating electrons to aluminium chloride. What will be formed as the product of the reaction will be CH3 positive plus. So all of this, all of this will form aluminium ClO4, then it is it. Negative. Aluminium Cl4, it is negative. So uh, this is different with this one because this one uh, it shows that there is the, the localization of charge in the whole molecule of aluminium chloride because uh, aluminium chloride it requires now three chlorine and then it has four chlorine. So there is the localization of of our electrons. And hence we get this one. Now, this group is what we can call as an electrophile. Electrophile. So in the next step, this electrophile go to attack benzene. So electrophile goes to attack benzene. I mean benzene, because benzene is the nucleophile. Sorry. So an electrophile cannot attack a nucleophile. 
but a nucleophile should donate electrons to attack an electrophile because the attack is just heating ni kama kuvamia so the compound which attack is the one with much electron so a nucleophile must attack an electrophile so what we have here we we'll have benzene in the next step we we'll have benzene and it's better to draw a um, or it's better to to put benzene these bonds and then after showing benzene of this way here we have a hydrogen in this benzene because as i told you in the start of this session that in every corner of benzene here we have carbon and hydrogen we have carbon and hydrogen so here we have uh, we have hydrogen and if we have hydrogen remember we have an electrophile there which is CH3 so in this step this bond will break donating the electrons to uh, donating the electrons to methane donating its electrons to methane so what happens what happens that means if we have broken this bond and then remember we said in the principles of showing reaction mechanism in the previous session that if these electrons they are passed through this carbon so the bond will be formed between this methyl and this carbon so the result of our reaction will be the result of reaction will be benzene will be benzene and then here we we'll have hydrogen here we we'll have CH3 but again remember we say another carbon which formed which formed the double bond will be possibly charged possibly charged so this is uh, the second step of the reaction the double bond here has broken not only again because the charge is formed there and a bond is formed there in the third step of the reaction in the third step of the reaction remember here we have four chlorines and this was equal to have three chlorines or as what it is here so in the third step chlorine from aluminium chloride will act as a nucleophile donating electrons to hydrogen and because hydrogen is still bonded to, to this carbon it can't accept electrons without breaking the bond so the bond will be broken donating electrons to this carbon hence neutralizing this carbon so what will happen or what I am explaining is we'll have benzene we'll have benzene and then from there we have hydrogen we have methane also from there we have a uh, chlorine aluminium chloride 4 so this chlorine this chlorine will donate electrons to hydrogen and then hydrogen will break to donate electrons to this carbon so if hydrogen will break to donate electrons to this carbon which was positive charge that means the positive charge will be neutralized so the end product of our reaction will be the end product of our reaction will be uh, benzene will be benzene and then this bond is already formed by donation of electron here we will end up with the methane so it is CH3 then plus uh, hydrogen chlorine will form hydrogen chloride and this one will be aluminium here it is 3, chloride 3 aluminium chloride 3 it is 3 because one of the chlorine is this one so this is how it is our electrophilic substitution reaction which is the commonest reaction in benzene takes place, it is how 
erythrophilic substitution reaction takes place. Now, uh, this marks the end of our discussion about uh, substitution reaction.